Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video. The old uh, fire trailer build was a bit of a popular video and um, there's a fair few questions about it and I think a few people wanted to see a bit of a follow-up video, I guess. So that's what I'm doing today. We're gonna check it out again, just answer a few questions. I think I'll, I'll jump onto YouTube and answer a few people's questions and all that kind of stuff. And I've actually got a nice big pile of oh, brush, I guess you'd call it, or you know, clippings and tree branches and that kind of stuff I need to burn today. It's a nice still day, so I'm gonna get onto that. So I'm gonna grab the quad, hook this up, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have another look at it for you guys that are interested. Let's do it. So first things first, before you know you're going to have a fire, make sure your pump runs. I've got a Honda motor on mine. These are amazing. These normally start first or second pull. Um, the ones that I've built, you know, some people want the Chinese copies, some people want the Hondas, but the Hondas are a fair bit more expensive, obviously for a reason, because they're bloody reliable when, um, when shit hits the fan. You want something that uh, starts pretty easy. So this hasn't been run for probably six months, I'd say, because we're just coming out of winter now. Um, so yeah, let's see how reliable they are. Bit of accelerator, fuel on, choke on, switch on. First pull, no. Second pull, just like that, after like six months. Now we know it runs, let's go go see the pile that I'm going to burn and we can light that up and I'll just answer a few questions I guess. Alright, one of the first questions I got was how does a quad go towing it and it really is fine. It's a 400cc quad, you put it in four drive and it's more than fine so you can see, I mean it's quite full here. That's probably, you know, a good six, seven hundred kilos that quad's towing right now and do it fine. We'll go for a hoon and I'll show you. Um, and another thing regarding that was, you know, baffles in the tank. It's it's an off-road, you know, trailer. It's not going on the road. It's not licensed. It's literally just for pulling around the property and putting out fires or having it on standby. So you really don't need the baffles. It, you know, it does move around a bit, um, gets a bit of a rock, whatever, but it's so stable. There's enough width in the trailer. Um, one thing I would do different on my one personally, if I knew I was towing it with a quad all the time, I'd get lower profile tyres. Like, these are 16 inch rims. So you can get pretty low profile 16s, you know, like probably half the sideboard width. And then that'll bring it down a bit lower and more level because you can see it kind of sits down a little bit. Um, but, you know, not the end of the world. It's pretty simple to put different wheels or tyres on it. That's no, no big issue. Um, but yeah, look, full to the top, you're going to have a ton, just over a ton there. So I wouldn't be going down any steep hills with that or up steep hills. But come on, it's, it's a bit of common sense thing. Awesome for towing around property. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to go up steeper stuff, maybe put it on a full drive, you know, it's uh, plenty of other options. And I guess then the, the height of the tow bars, probably, you probably want it up a bit higher if you're towing it behind a full drive anyway. So, I mean, there's going to be a million different scenarios, but I'm just telling you what I think. Alrighty, we'll go for a bit of a hoon on the quad, see how it uh, behaves itself. If I can get this thing started. Alright, I'll try and, try 
try and put you on the trailer so you can see what it does. the pole I need to burn so I might go get the ute because I've got the diesel put on put a bit of diesel on it might just move around the other side so I can get the ute there Good to give it give it a bit of diesel. We'll just move the it for the next part. Here's the fun part. Petrol's purely for the bang and the excitement. This is one of my favourite parts. Pretty warm over here. All right, now that that's burning in the background, I can um, jump onto YouTube and answer a few of your questions. All right, got one here, great project. Use the metal sheet on the IBC to give another person a clue which way to set the valves for pumping water and for drawing water. Pitches work best in a stress situation. Yep, good idea. I um, yeah, that's not a bad idea at all. Um, but yeah, normally when I supply these, I um, run the clients through them anyway. But I know once you build one, you can't really can't really tell what it's going to be used for or who's going to use it. So yeah, sticker is a good idea. Um, all right, having just completed my own setup last month, it is worth time and money spent putting together best advice is fully cam lock all your hose connections for quick attach and detach when you aren't using them I used a T-piece with two valves for supply line to pump tank and also a secondary one for suction also used to release outlet as my filler hose that goes right into the tank outlet on right side T-piece connected to the tank outlet that's a bit confusing but yeah cam lock the hoses are don't know why you'd want to cam lock them maybe if you're in a frost area where it freezes maybe but not here in Australia so it's, uh, it's not a thing over here but yeah cam lock well I have cam lock the suction hose when you want to put that on if you're sucking out of a pool or a dam um, but yeah all the other ones like the hose and to the actual like ball valves and stuff are clamped on 
so I don't know why you'd want them cam locks, but like I said, unless it's just for frost. Um, yeah, another one's about the baffling, which I've already addressed. Uh, very nice build that's going on my to-do list. Don't forget to vent the top cap. That pump will collapse the IBC tote easily. Yes, absolutely. The, I'll show you. The little lid actually has a small hole in it. Hope you can see that. But yeah, you're right. If it's not vented, you'll uh, suck that IBC inwards towards itself. That'd be pretty funny to see, actually. Um, is that a thousand litre tow? Yes, it is. Yep, I can pull it with the quad. What size are the rear tyres, rims? Here you go. Uh, they are down there. Um, load rating is over there. Single 1320 kilos each. So yeah, like I said, they're heavy duty Land Cruiser rims, so way more than what's needed for this. Um, no need for the top hose going into the IBC as you can fill the tank up from the bottom existing outlet. So I was a little bit confused about that one because uh, if the bottom outlet is your suction for the water. So there is my bottom outlet, which is obviously the in for the pump. I'm not quite sure how you're then gonna fill, fill from that point when you're sucking. I guess with a few ball valves maybe. Put one over there, close it, suck from there, and then back into there. Yeah, I mean that's doable, but why would you? That's easy as. And another thing too, if you want to circulate, like I said in the other video, if you want to circulate liquid, you put fertilizer in there or something and want to fertilize your um, plants, whatever you're watering, that's um, probably what you want to do there. Hey, another question. What do we got? The real hose and nozzle combo look good. What brand are they? Um, they are literally just second handies I got off Gumtree, so this one here is, that's pretty much the only sticker on it, Galvin Engineering, PTY, LTD, yeah 1982, huh, jeez I wonder if that's actually correct, pretty really old, um, great build, I'd be interested in a schematic for the water flow if you could share it, yeah I was like it's pretty simple really like I'll, you just need to watch the video in that's in for the pump and that's out for the pump so i think that one runs to your hose that one runs to your ibc to fill up so i don't know it's quite simple pulling that loaded behind an atv would require a lot of a lot of care, that much weight could jackknife real easy. Again, you, you set it, just take care, be careful. Uh, what thickness RHS did you use for the chassis? chassis? <laughs> Three or five mil? Ah, uh, that's actually two and a half mil gal. Ah, uh, yeah, look, a few comments about the video, like sound and music stuff. Yeah, look, hey, I'm still a rookie. It's all new to me, this whole editing thing, so I will work on that, I promise. Uh, make a video on it siphoning out of a pond. It's actually a good one. Uh, I won't do that right now, but I'll get back onto that. Uh, parts list. Look, it's I'm pretty, you just got to watch the video and pause it and kind of work out what's what. What's the PSI from the pump? Not actually sure, to, to be honest with you. Um, let's have a look. Nope. Sticker there. That doesn't really tell you PSI or anything. So it's an Aussie Pumps brand. 
just the brand of it down there. Uh, length of axle, I'm pretty sure, oh, it's like 1120 millimeters, I think. What quad do you pull it with? That's the CF Moto right there. Um, but yeah, thanks for the question, guys. That's awesome. Hope I'm answering them for you. But yeah, once this is burnt down a bit, and I don't need this right here, I'll uh, I'll suck from the pool and show you a little video of the pump sucking from the pool. Okay, but apart from that, just uh, enjoy the smoke for now. <laughs> so much for my still day. Nah, it's not too bad. Go and get this bad boy sucking out of the pool. Show you what it's all about. Right, so as you're saying, I just threw that in in the pool. It's gonna suck out of there. Here's my hose that carry that gets carried on the front of the high BC. This cover here will pop off. Oh, close your valve first, <laughs> rookie. Alright, close that valve. That's free. This goes in here. I'm trying to lose one handed, so clamps go down. That's it, so that's closed, so it's no longer sucking from the IBC, it's going to be sucking from the pool. So, what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to let it go into the IBC because I don't want chlorinated water in there, just so all the pump and stuff, I don't want that stuck corroding away, obviously, being aluminium and all that. Um, but yeah, that one can stay on because that's the hose. So we're sucking out of the pool and getting pumped through to the hose. So let's fire her up. The valve is on, so let's get the hose off. And the hose 
on. There you go. I'm just going to fire this back up and let the fresh water run through it. There you have it. All right. There's probably going to be some people going, hey, that took a fair while to prime when you're sucking out of the pool. And yes, it did because I didn't want to fill the IBC up. Um, obviously, I'm trying to pump through 
the fire hose, which, you know, has a tiny little hole and all that volume of air and water has to come out first before it sucks it up. Um, in an emergency, you'd be filling up the IBC. So you'd be pumping through that one into the IBC and that would prime in about, you know, five seconds. So yeah, that's, that's not gonna be an issue. Um, anyway, it's not the end of the world anyway, that whole minute. But I guess if there's a fire coming at you, you want to be as quick as possible. But yeah, I literally was just doing that because I didn't want to get the chlorine water in the IBC and have it sitting in, sitting in there for, you know, a year or whatever. Because this thing obviously doesn't come out that much, only in summer or, you know, if you don't want to burn or if there is an actual emergency or something like that. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with that. So look, I hope I've answered most of your questions. If you've got any other ones, hit me up in the comments if you want to know anything i'll try and answer them too but yeah look i really appreciate you watching the other videos and this video and yeah hope you learned something and thanks again i'll see you on the next one